Hey, on Refined, a Seattle super chef goes south of the border. Okay, if this place couldn't get any better, there's actually a slushy machine here. Slushy like, machine. Slushy for adults. One for adults, one for kids. Okay, let's do the adult one. Find out why kids and their parents will love Super Bueno. So, Becca. <laughs> then, the bachelorette goes for the gold. He's like if Ron Burgundy and Zoolander had a love child. Oh. And one of the most messed up love scenes in bachelorette history. I'm like, Molly, you a danger girl. Run. <laughs> You want one of these? Plus, reality TV hopefuls in the hot seat. How do you feel about living in one house with a bunch of women all macking on the same bro? Our college correspondent runs wild at the Bachelor casting call. And I'm going to slide right on in where things fit best. Seattle Refine starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refine. I'm Guard Swanson. Summer is here, and when the sun starts to sizzle, there's nothing I like better than to wet my whistle with a delicious margarita. We sent Refine's Malia Karlinski to check out a new Mexican restaurant with margaritas on the menu and much, much more. Fun, festive, and familia friendly. That's the vibe at Super Bueno. We're down here at Super Bueno. Uh, it's our version of a Mexican restaurant uh, down here in uh, Fremont and Stoneway. Okay. And we really want it to be a really family-friendly place. The eatery is the newest addition to Chef Ethan Stoll's foodie empire. You've already tackled French, Italian, Pacific Northwest, lots of other stuff. Why Mexican, too? It was actually Angela's idea. Angela, you know, obviously my wife and business partner. Ethan and Angela are the parents of two young boys. So they designed the space with families in mind, including a kid pit. There's a door on the thing so they can know they're in there and they're safe and, uh, you know, various activities. Uh, there's the felt wall, things like that, so that they can go there and, and parents can, you know, there's a TV up there also. Parents can come in and watch the game or they can just go in and have a conversation. But it's I'm, hard to do when you're a it's, parent. It's hard to do when you're a parent, especially with young kids. You, know? you are from a really creative family yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Ken Stoll, Francia Russell, that's your parents, 30 years yep. as artistic directors of the Pacific Northwest Ballet. Yep. Were you the black sheep when you were said, Mom, Dad, I'm not really that into ballet. I, I think I want to cook something. I was the, the youngest one, so I was really into cartoons and comic books. Uh, and, but you know, the one thing that rubbed off on my, you know, with my family was my dad's hobby. His profession was was was, was being a choreographer and the artistic director of the ballet company. But his hobby was cooking. So we had dinner together as a family every night. Shake and bake chicken was my first dish I ever made. <laughs> Susan, you shake, and Sally, you bake. It's shake and bake. Oh, well, speaking of dishes, you've got some really creative, cool dishes here. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by the salad that has Pop Rocks in it. Yeah, the watermelon salad yeah. Pop Rocks. You know, it sounds a little weird, but it is really delicious. Kids love it. It's really cool to have, uh, you know, the you know the you know the salad coming out and it's crackling. And all there, and kids are like, oh wow, cool. There are also tons of traditional Mexican food faves on the menu. You know, we have nice salads, nice nachos, uh, obviously tacos, and all those types of things are, I mean, I think they're good. I think there's things for kids, there's things for adults, there's things for everybody. You know, but me, I'm a meat guy, so I, I you know, I like the carnita taco or the carne asada. There's like a hundred different types of uh, mezcal and tequila. Which means there are lots of great grown-up drinks available. Okay, if this place couldn't get any better, there's actually a slushy machine here. Slushy like, machine. Slushy for adults. One for adults, one for kids. Okay, let's do the adult one. Uh, all right, I want you to do it. All right, pull it down. I need one of these in my house. That was probably the easiest uh, thing I've ever That's made in my life. Very easy. This is muy bueno. <laughs> muy bueno at super bueno. This restaurant is like a fiesta. We want it to be fun. We want it to be high energy. We want people to know that we're, you know, that we're not trying to be super serious. And that's Super Bueno for everyone. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. By the way, Super Bueno also boasts a casual cafe area where you can get espresso, breakfast, and lunch items, and kid-friendly snacks. For more information, check out our website. If cookies and bubbles are more your thing, Pioneer Square is about to get a new summer hotspot. The shop Lady Yum is soon to be the latest addition to Occidental Square. It's the fourth location for the Kirkland-based business that specializes in macaroons and champagne. There's no exact opening date yet, but we'll keep you posted. And folks in White Center are about to be seeing unicorns, or rather, the unicorn. The circus-themed Capitol Hill Bar is opening a second location in the South Seattle community. Owners will set up shop in a building that used to be a bowling alley. It's expected to open by the end of the year. One of Broadway's most crowd-pleasing hits is about to hit the Seattle stage. 
The Color Purple arrives at Seattle's Paramount Theater this Wednesday. It is, of course, the Tony Award-winning musical adaptation of the Alice Walker novel. It runs through Sunday, and tickets are still available. Sunday is also the last day for the Village Theater's production of Hairspray in Issaquah. Hairspray is the Tony Award-winning musical version of the 1987 John Waters cult classic film. If you don't have a chance to see it this week, never fear. The whole production moves up the 405 to the Village Theater's Everett location on July 6th. Speaking of the spotlight, hundreds of local guys and gals are on pins and needles this week waiting to find out if they have what it takes to earn themselves a spot on ABC's The Bachelor. Casting producers just wrapped up its Seattle auditions for the hit reality show. Refine's college correspondent Owen Leopold was there. Hey guys, it's Owen. I'm here at The Bachelor casting call at Pacific Place. Let's go check it out and talk to some ladies, shall we? Oh my gosh, you guys, there's a whole lot of estrogen and I'm not a whole lot of testosterone, but I'm feeling happy about it. How do you feel about living in one house with a bunch of women all macking on the same bro? Honestly, I live with three women right now. I have kissed the same person as a couple of my friends, and so... So are you here for love or are you here for TV? Love, obviously. Hey, guard! Guard! Get over here for a second. I got a question. It's for Owen. Oh, it's oh, Owen. It's my good buddy. Hi, Paul. Owen. Here. I'm so unsure of how to deal with all of the overwhelming just emotions that I'm feeling right now. A whole lot of B E A U T Y. How can I handle everything that's going to happen? Breathe. Have you done this? Yeah. I haven't. Big deep breath. Now, now, are you single? Yeah. Perfect. Get as many phone numbers as possible. Okay. Get as many. There's a lot of women here, like two or three hundred of them. Yeah, and they're all pretty. Hundred. Hundred. Two or three hundred. Hundred. That's yeah. like a third of a thousand. So you got That's your, intense. You got... I can't listen to my Are you look wonderful? Give us a spin. Give us a spin. And that's Brittany, everybody. Do you kiss on the first date? Well, I don't kiss and tell. What makes you happiest? Food. Friends and family. Friends and family. And you? Being outside. Being outside. So we have an outdoorsy, a friends and family, and a foodie. Delish. What's your greatest fear? The greatest fear in your life right now is? Um, so I have submechanophobia. Okay. Fear of um, man-made objects underwater. So you're not scared of fish, but no. you're scared of robot fish that we made <laughs> yeah, as men. Okay, exactly. okay. Exactly. Gotta manage the man. Wow, messy and fun, just like me. Wow. And I said I was going for something that looked more natural because it's kind of my style. A natural, as they say in France. Do you think that you have what it takes? Yeah. Well, then good. Confidence is key, right? Right. Confidence. Confidence on the escalator. That's what I've learned. So what'd you say your name was? It was Megan? It's Megan, yes. Megan. Like so Megan, I'm... but with an M. Megan. What a great president he was, right? Uh, you know, I wasn't alive then, but from what my grandparents like to tell me. He wasn't the best, yeah, was not he? the greatest. Not my the mom... greatest bachelor. My grandma was actually mad that my mom spelled my name just like Reagan with an M. Well, what a thing to be upset about. I think that's very understandable, right? Say it with me. Very understandable. Wow, wow. So we could be the blonde squad now, couldn't we? We have one, two, three, four, and number five. Uh, you want one of these? You want one of these? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, you think you're going to get one? Hopefully. You think you're going to get one like time and time again? I'm going to cross my fingers. I'm sorry, I was just sniffing my rose. You caught me at an awkward time. That's about as close as I'm ever going to get to being on The Bachelor. For Seattle Refined, I'm Owen Leopold, signing off. Woo! Yeah! 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 That's what I like to call a wrap. Hopefuls may have to wait six months or longer to find out if they made the cut. To learn more about the casting call or to watch that story again, log on to our website. Seattle Refine is just getting started. We visit a local company testing the laws of attraction. How much fun is this product? The actual product itself, it's a magnet. But first. So what, what you just said isn't true? I guess I'm confused now. Becca gets blindsided and our round table thinks it stinks. Jean needs a set called Clueless or Desperation. We'll be right back. Is Becca over her blow up? Does Jordan have the golden touch or just the golden underwear? Those are just a few of the burning questions as ABC's The Bachelorette leaps into week five tonight. 
Our refined roundtable has its take. Let's start at the beginning. Right off the bat, rose ceremony, David with the face comes back. Hey, David, remember me? How are you? The guy broke his nose. If you've ever seen somebody with a broken nose, that's what he looked like. You can tell that he's been knocked down a few pegs because he fell off of a bunk bed. It wasn't that bad. I was really hoping it was going to be like Phantom of the Opera. He's coming in with a mask on, but no, it wasn't as bad as what they were making it look like. In true Becca fashion, I think out of pure sympathy, she gave him a rose right off the bat. It was, as Jordan described it, a pity rose. He's probably thinking he can save some face, but uh, little does he know he has no face to save. So then at the end of the first rose ceremony of the night, uh, Becca announces that they are going to Park City, Utah. And to start off Park City, she takes Garrett out on a one-on-one. -on -one. I think it was genuinely one of the most real one-on-one -on -one sparks flying dates I've seen in a long time on in Bachelor history. I feel like I watched a different date than yours, because I wasn't feeling the chemistry from him at all. I was feeling it from Becca. Like, I feel like she's very smitten with him. They genuinely, I could tell we're falling, falling for each other. And he even kind of lets his guard down a little bit, opens up to Becca that he was married. And after two months of marriage, we got divorced. And I think that I, I fell in love with and got married to the wrong person. I feel like maybe that's something that you you would tell Becca earlier in the process. I felt like that was kind of a bigger bomb drop than we all anticipated from sweet little Garrett, who might not actually be so sweet. TBD. Back at the house, can we talk about Lincoln for a second? Now it's really weird to watch Lincoln on TV because it came out last week that he's basically convicted of some kind of sexual harassment with somebody else. And then he's talking about how he thinks the world is flat. If this is the earth in a circle, are we here? And the water is there. And if the water is there, why isn't it falling down on us? So Lincoln doesn't believe apparently in boundaries or gravity at this point. And just keep watching him getting a rose is awkward for everybody. So I think we're all waiting for Lincoln to get out of there. Just let's be done with him. Okay. Let's move on to the group date, which is the largest group date Beck has ever had. She took 13 guys out to a lumberjack challenge. Damn, they're sexy in those flannels. Turns out that Venmo John is pretty good at climbing things, though, because he ends up winning this challenge for his team. So the real drama happened the group date after the chopping down the logs. It was our friend Jean, uh, the perfume guy, the scent guy, gives Becca her own scent. Great gesture. Jean Blanc shot his shot this week and missed badly. Like, by the end of it, he sounded like a maniac. He goes back to Becca and basically professes his love, says, I'm falling in love with you. I'm like, Molly, you in danger, girl. Run. <laughs> I'm truly falling for you, and I'm falling in love with you. I don't know if I'm on that same page. I don't know if it's fair, though, to keep you around if I don't know if I necessarily see it and if we can get there. And he, as he's leaving, he says the worst thing he could say to her. I just thought that, you know, that's, that's where you wanted to take things, and you were ready, and that's, you know, that's what you wanted to hear. And this, and so what you, what you just said isn't true? I guess I'm confused now. Exactly what she was worried about and what happened to her with Ari happened to her on a much smaller level with the guys just saying, you know, Jean just saying whatever he thought she wanted her to hear and then being like, oh yeah, by the way, I was lying. I don't actually love you. Jean needs a set called Clueless or Desperation. The other drama on the group date after is Jordan, the modeling Jordan uh, with his golden undies. Colton takes it upon himself to take Jordan aside and go, dude, you're really being stupid. Do you guys not think that I'm tired of being approached by people in the house? Because I've lost all respect for you. Rightfully Fantastic. so. Fantastic, cool, good deal. And then so Jordan's like, no, Becca loves the undies, the golden undies. It's a thing between us. And he even shows up in his undies and dances for her. And Becca doesn't seem to hate it. Uh, uh. Ah, uh, dance my way into the other room with my pants. Because he's not completely unlikable. He's like if Ron Burgundy and Zoolander had a love child. Have they even kissed yet? They kissed. Again, it was weird. Yeah, it was like watching paint <laughs> dry. Yeah. So, Becca, I'm just gonna kiss. I gotta get a kiss in here before I go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. And then they all come together for a rose ceremony. 
She sends away two people for the life of me. I could not tell you their names. Tonight's episode is, I think, going to be one of the most memorable of the season, largely because it seems like we're going to get the moment we've been waiting for, and that's a two-on-one between David and Jordan. I hope Jordan wins this battle. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, let's check it out. All in Vegas. Happening tonight. Smells like victory. <laughs> Find out who Becca sends home tonight when The Bachelor airs tonight at 8 here on Como 4. Coming up on Refine, we let our geek flag fly. And a local business making refrigerator doors everywhere a heck of a lot more fun. Here at Seattle Refined, we never get tired of hearing from you. Like us on Facebook, tweet us your story ideas, or shoot us an email telling us what you want to see on the show. You can find our inbox at hello at seattlerefined.com. Seattle Refined will be right back. Welcome back to Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. Now, if you own a home, Chances are you also own a refrigerator, and chances are good somewhere on that fridge is a magnet. And as Refine's John Prentice discovered, there's also a very good chance that magnet came from a business in Monroe that he found very attractive. Greetings from Ohio, New Mexico, New York, and Monroe. This is Morse Magnets. We manufacture uh, refrigerator magnets, make about 15 to 20,000 pieces a day, every day. Uh, we also make uh, an array of other products, key tags and coasters and awards. There's all kinds of different little tchotchkes. We also do a lot of gift business that you'll find in souvenir stores all around the country. From custom light switch covers for big companies to kitschy signs for your vacation home, Morris Magnus does a little bit of everything. But their bread and butter is the good old refrigerator magnet, holding grocery lists, kids' drawings, and photos of loved ones to fridges all over the USA. I told my mom when I was going to buy this place 21 years ago that I was buying a magnet company, and I can still hear her say, Oh, Bill. I mean, who, who can make a living selling magnets, right? This place cranks out more than 4 million magnets and other knickknacks every year. But whether they're headed to Vegas, Amish country, or the Minnesota Transportation Museum, all Morris magnets start off in the design department. Sarah Lego is in charge and says each product is unique and tailored to meet the client's wishes. Over the uh, about 10 years that you've been here, how many pieces do you think you've designed? Thousands, tens of thousands. <laughs> it's been a lot. Once the design is finalized, it goes on to production. Multiple images printed on special paper are stacked with thick transparent sheets like these and melted together in this big machine. It takes about 30 to 40 seconds per board, running at over 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Peel off the protective film and you have a sheet of magnets. Miguel does this every day and says he takes great pride in his work. Are there any of these places that you want to visit? Yeah, we make a lot of uh, products for Austin, Texas, and so that'd probably be a nice place to go visit. Sweet. <laughs> Lastly, these sheets need to be cut into individual magnets with a laser. Did you ever think you'd get to play with lasers every day? No, actually, when I first, you know, saw the job opportunity, I, I thought it would be so cool to go in there and play with them. Once the shapes are cut out, technicians buff them to a high luster before being packed up and shipped out. What's your favorite piece that you've worked on so far? There was these uh, baby ones that had a mustache on it. I thought it was funny. Right when I saw it, I thought I laughed so hard. Amazing. But for Morris Magnets, it's all in a day's work. How much fun is this product? The actual product itself, it's a magnet. John Prentice, Seattle Refined. To learn more about Morris Magnets, log on to our website. Seattle Refined will be right back. Welcome back to Refined. Northwest superhero geeks are still recovering today from a weekend of letting their freak flag fly. Ace Comic Con took over CenturyLink Field Event Center this weekend. Folks don their best costumes to celebrate all things comic books and pop culture. Among this year's special guest, Avengers star Tim Hiddleston and Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland. You can check out the galleries of all three days on our website. That's going to do for today's show. I'm Guard Swanson. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time right back here on Seattle Refine.